What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Steel Mace Nation podcast. I am your host, Fred Moore, and today's episode is with Sean Richardson of Banff Hammer, B A M F Hammer. And Sean uh, comes on to the podcast to discuss his interesting uh, workout implement. It's a big block of rubber on the end of a handle. I don't know if anybody of you, if any of you have seen it or not on Instagram or Facebook, but a lot of people were starting to use it. I had a chance, I had an opportunity to actually use it because he mailed me a 40 pound hammer that I carried around with me to the gym, to the firehouse, and, and everybody was taking a look at it. I loved it, so I, I asked him to come out to the podcast to talk about it. And he was such a cool dude. Uh, got a chance to meet him and high energy guy and everything. Uh, he just wants everybody to know that about the existence of the bath hammer and you know that he it can be used for bodybuilding and functionality and um, the, you know the there's a lot of diverse applications to it. So we'll get to that podcast in two seconds. Before we go, just want to fire off a couple of shout outs to the sponsors of this podcast. Starting off with Mace Fit. Uh, Frank DeMeo over at Mace Fit, he, uh, is, he's, his whole uh, program is working with Mace and Clubs. They like to use the Adex Mace. And, uh, but, you know, you can get a certification through his system. Uh, and you don't necessarily have to use Adex. You could use other types of Mace and Clubs. But it's, but it's the type of workout that you learn, and you could actually use this as a coach and – uh, you know, deliver something different to your clients. Um, so check out macefit.com. And then, of course, I just mentioned Adex. Uh, I mentioned Adex a lot because they're a sponsor of the podcast, but because I actually love swinging those damn maces, those damn clubs. They are so cool. I drive around with one in my truck, and I carry all the, um, the different weights so I could get a full workout starting off light, work my way up to the heavy. Um, check out Adex mace on instagram uh it's adex clubs actually and uh if you go online you could use the discount code smn19 for 10 percent off that's for all you steel mace nation fans you can get 10 percent off any product that uh don over at adex is selling and last but not least on go energy spray has been a uh, sponsor of the podcast uh, almost from the beginning, and OnGo Energy Spray is is really cool. It's just a, a spray pump bottle. You could spray uh, two or three blasts in your mouth, and you get like almost instant energy. I'm going to say like three to five minutes, you start feeling the caffeine kick in, and it's great for people who don't want to drink a pre workout shake or uh, they you know maybe coffee or something they don't want to get bloated and have to pee in the middle of their workout you know the, the whole deal with that so check out ongo energy spray and use the discount code steelmace25 for 25 percent off and let's get to the podcast well dude thanks so much for having me on this is awesome i really appreciate it yeah no this is this is really cool because um are we recording yep. okay uh, we're, we're rolling. So yeah, this is really cool. I'm glad to, to meet you like this. Um, because, uh, you know, I started, I became familiar with your product, your Banff hammers, um, online first, like most people do. I was swinging yeah. a mace and I was like, this thing looks interesting. And, um, then you're like, Hey, I'll send you one to try out. So you <laughs> send me this big box. And how heavy was that? Like 40 pounds or 30 pounds? Yeah. Pound hammer. Yeah, you. So you said the like, like a very heavy one, very unwieldy, and uh, it was all signed by other people. It's traveling the country, and uh, yeah. I brought it to the firehouse for the guys to use. They, and you, I think you saw the video. They were smacking it on the ground, and everybody oh, yeah. was you know busting each other's balls, laughing about it and everything. And then uh, I brought it over to the gym, and I showed it to the guys over there. And it's cool just handing it to somebody and saying, "Go ahead." See what you can do with it, and and then whatever their strong suit is, whether it's uh, kettlebell swings or um, tire slams, whatever, that they'll start replicating what they're familiar with and using it. So you could see how a person's imagination can actually play into using this. But what Absolutely. was, yeah, what was your initial thought process when you came up with the Banff hammer? Um, uh, we'll say I was watching a movie. And for the sake of legal reasons, I won't say which one, but people could probably guess. Um, uh, I mean, I've been coaching for 
10 years when I made the first one. And it was really just uh, it, like a, a complete accident. Like I, um, I've always enjoyed the, like I got into more traditional like uh, mace and steel club work early on when I started coaching, just going, this is the, the universal fix for shoulder problems. Like, here we go. It doesn't matter what you're doing. You should probably be swinging a mace um or or doing some indian club work just to keep the shoulders happy and then you know marvel movies start coming out and uh i was watching one just going i don't care if you are worthy you can't throw a hammer like a baseball it just doesn't work and so i built one to prove like to test the theory and see if i was right and the first one was 30 pounds and um like i tried to pull it over my shoulder and huck it and almost rip my shoulder out of joint and then started using it like a kettlebell and was going, Oh, this is different. Like the, the handle orientation, it, it presents a different challenge. Um, and then, Oh, I can, I can, it changes your squat. It changes your press. It changes all, all types of stuff. And I just kind of kept pushing the boundaries out of what I was doing with it. And wherever I pushed, there was something new. It, it wasn't, I won't say it was necessarily better, but it was different. Yeah. And, as a coach, I'm always trying to come up with a thing that gets athletes more engaged in, in the actual coaching um, and paying more attention to what their body's doing in space as opposed to like the middle school attitude of I pay you money, now I get to phone it in and not pay attention. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of where it started. And it was, the first one was built out of wood. So there's no slam in it. Um, and it, that one eventually died because I was flipping it and dropped it and it just like shattered. Wow. Um, and it took probably a year and a half to find the right material to make it out of so that I could slam it on the ground. And after that, it's just kind of hit the ground running. Um, you know, I, before we hopped on the call, I'm, I'm messaging my, my rubber guy going, dude, we, I, I'm out. I need more, um, more rubber, so, please. Yeah. Um, actually, uh, the, uh, the, there's a, a giant training facility that the Marines have built in the last couple of years down at 29 Palms in San Diego, and they ordered a dozen from me. So no I'm shit. like, yeah, it looks wow. so st um, cause it's, it's like, so I need to get rubber fast so I can get it out the door and get it moving. Um, where do you is is everything made in uh in the United States? Um, they don't make rubber in the United States, do they? Yeah, so the um the it is a military grade vulcanized ballistics rubber and they make it in they press them in Minnesota. Oh cool. Uh, which is great because I have a couple of orders that went up to Canada and um I've had a couple of people be like, "So what happens when it get, gets cold?" I'm like you're swinging a hammer and you're cold. Like that's all. Um it's it's a pretty i won't say it's indestructible but it's a it'll stop bullets right um, and um but yeah they make it in minnesota and then i uh bring the rubber down here and i make everything like right over there so my welding setup is there and my drill press is there and uh I make everything in the garage. Oh, that's cool. So now what's in the middle? It, it's not just all rubber that gives it the weight, is it? You got a hunk of a steel in there too? Nope. Oh, solid. Wow. So, that's, so that's just 40. Like if you get the 40-pound hammer, it's pretty much a 40-pound block of rubber. It's a Yeah, it's a 36-pound block of rubber and a 4-pound handle. Okay. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. And yeah, uh, it, it's fun. It's like it, it's one of those things where if, if my manufacturing capacity was higher, I – my dog is hearing me talk to you and like freaking out um <laughs> let the dog come in oh yeah stop chill out we've had cats on the podcast before so we got to oh, have nice. some dogs on the podcast <laughs> um but uh it would be cool to do it loadable but i haven't figured out a way to make it work so that it won't destroy it when you slam it on the ground yeah and that's such a pivotal part of the movement that it can't go away. Yeah, because what you're saying is if you made it loadable, it would be like layers of rubber that you would attach to each other. So then you would have the potential for that. It's not as it's not as stable. It's, it's not as stable. Yeah. Um, and I would like it. It would be unmakeable in my garage. Yeah. 
maybe on the day where somebody buys the patent off me and starts making them instead, which I would really like, yeah. uh, take that step forward. But for right now, uh, the process is pretty streamlined. Um, I've had to innovate a couple of things to make it work. Um, but we do pretty well right, right now. Yeah. So now where did you get the name BAMP from? I thought that that was going to be part of your, your last name or something. It turns out that's not your last name. It's Richardson. No, so it's, um, I mean, it, it, it stands for the bodybuilding and mobile functionality hammer. And okay. it's, uh, I, I get frequently asked if it stands for something else and it doesn't, uh, <laughs> but, um, I was just calling it when I was filling out the original paperwork. Um, I was just calling it the big fat hammer. And then the guy processing the patent put, uh, put the M in there. And I was like, uh, yeah, I feel like I need to come up with an acronym to make this work. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and that's kind of where, where it, it all started. I'm also, I've been a comic book nerd for as long as I can remember. And, um, like, as opposed to, I'm the guy who ended up in the gym because of comic books, as opposed to his mom's basement. Um, and uh, <laughs> when you slam it, it sounds, it sounds in my head the same way Nightcrawler's, uh, teleportation would sound like that's written as Banff when he, whenever he teleports in the comic and it always like that smack sounds like that in my brain. Oh, that's cool. It's kind of always the sound that my brain made when I was reading it. So it kind of fits on a, a couple of different levels. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah, you know, um, this podcast studio is very heavily rooted in comics. Yeah, I'm, like, looking over your shoulder going, yeah. nerds work here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you would you would, you would, would love it. There's, like, Fantastic Four stuff, um, Captain America. I mean, there's tons of st stuff here. The owner of the podcast studio is um, Ming Chen. He's from Comic Book Man. He's, okay. He's actually my engineer. He's looking at me right now. He's holding Dude, a gun to me saying, you better you better give me a plug. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, there you go. Yeah, Ming Chen is going to buy a hammer and train with it and become Yo. There's your <laughs> there you go. Press. You have nine months to figure it out. Nine months. All right. I can help him train. So yeah, absolutely. I got a question now because you indicated bodybuilding – as well as functionality. Now, right out of the gate, I'm looking at your hammer as function functionality, like, oh, I could use this to train as a fireman or uh, a, somebody who's practicing um, for, uh, say, a CrossFits or something like that. But bodybuilding is interesting to me. And um, yeah. can you explain that a little bit? Because, I mean, bodybuilders are always, you know, using the same methods all the time. Um, sure. Um, it Truth be told, the the B in bodybuilding probably um, is the least genuine letter in the acronym. Um, but the little bit of like bodybuilding style training, and that's that's not my style of training at all. I've worked with some athletes that that's their primary focus. But the interesting thing about the hammer is, you know, when you're when you're working in a bodybuilding setting. The goal is to find the least advantageous range of motion to create the maximal amount of force output necessary to tax the musculature. And so the way the hammer kind of engages with that is because of the, the odd leverage, the odd distribution of load, there's certain movements like taking a hammer, taking a curl with a dumbbell, you're using an even load mm -hmm. and just kind of you know, whether you're doing creature curls or whatever, um, you're taxing the muscle through um, slowing down the rep or, you know, you're doing rep ranges and rest counts. With the hammer, you can change the lever point in the midst of the rep just based on where you hold on to the the grip. Um, it's, it's probably the smallest application that you could use it for, but I've had guys who are, you know, big time bodybuilders. And I mean, I'm taking this thing to big box gyms and just working out on my own. Um, but guys who, you know, you get your bench press jockeys who are sitting there repping out 400 pounds and they're, they're benching three times a week, can't take a hammer, which is 40 pounds and move it accurately through a range of motion. Right. You want to see a group of guys get pissed off. Yeah. 
take a guy who's benching 400 for reps and put 40 pounds in his hand and he's not able to press it and it's like this sucks what is this and it's like dude your grip is garbage right. like right um that's really where that that falls in um but i i kind of look at bodybuilding in in a it's less of the the more traditional bodybuilding like sport and more like you were building your system go for it okay got you understood and you know i'll tell you what what i liked about my favorite exercise that i was able to do in the short amount of time that i had your hammer was um like a, a like a kettlebell swing up to my shoulder yeah let it let it land here and then do a squat and oh yeah i got that idea of doing it um from using a sandbag now with a sandbag you do the same thing right but here yeah. is where your hammer created a different situation the sandbag it's pretty forgiving in the sense mm -hmm. that it's a soft bag i mean you could smack yourself on the side of the head with it while you're doing this and all right no problem you might get a little scuff mark but big deal you could Not just deal. yeah you could just slap it up on your shoulder do your squat yank it off and do and do it again with the bamf hammer you have to be very careful because if you do that, you're going to crush your shoulder. You're going to rip your ear off. Right. And I've done that. Not ripped it off, but like actually had it slide down my ear. It was like, okay. Yes. Right. It's done. Yeah. And that's, and that's, you know, not, not to like, you know, scare people off or whatever. Like, Oh, it sounds dangerous. It's not the, the point that I'm making is, is that you have to deliver it up to the to the shoulder in a different fashion you can't just haphazardly just toss it up there you have to be more mindful of your movement which yeah. forces you to slow down and have better form and you are getting a hell of a greater workout that way um yeah and and that's just something that i already was able to appreciate if anybody swings a mace they could totally uh accept this thought you know you're you're whizzing a piece of steel around your head you mm -hmm. have to pay attention to what you're doing but it's the Absolutely. fact that you're paying attention and creating such a strong focus which is what makes the workout so awesome because you're not thinking about anything else you're focused on your task at hand which is what we want to be doing when we're working out anyway so exactly the translation over to just regular things like barbell lifting or even how you walk like you know you pay attention you're more mindful of how you move because of implementing um mace workouts or in you know with the bamf hammer yeah and i mean it's i'm, I'm glad you brought it up because honestly it's the thing now that i'm i'm kind of having the most trouble with translating to people who own them or interested in buying them um like the so when when people buy a hammer from me i give away a three-month program for free it's a it's i mean i would charge four hundred dollars for it if somebody was just buying it off me um but it's it's essentially taking that attitude and going you can't come at this the way that western strength training tends to come at things which is start with a small enough weight that you're not going to hurt yourself and build up your capacity. It doesn't necessarily go, you're going to build up a positive capacity. You and I both know guys who are like benching and squatting. And it's like, you've gotten really good at being really bad at that. Yeah. Um, and so the, the training with a band hammer is much more. And I, I give the association. It's much more like gymnastics training in the way that you approach the technique the weight stays the same. Like when, if a guy wants a hammer, any dude out there who's listening right now, you need to get a 40 pound hammer. And it's, it's the assumption is like, Oh, that's too heavy to start with. Yes. Yes, it is. That weight is going to limit your stupid. Like that's, that's what happens. Cause you're going to get a 20 pound hammer. And the first thing you're going to do is start flipping the thing all over the place. And you don't have the, the mind body connection yeah. to get it done. So when you start the program, it's like five reps for a couple of rounds and guys, especially, but like people coming out of CrossFit attitudes or whatever, they're like, that's not enough. I'm like, you're, you're learning the wrong thing. Right. We are taking a load and putting it on your system and then building your body's capacity to manipulate that load. 
So if you're doing handstand push-ups or, you know, muscle-ups, you don't get to cut your legs off so that you can do the rep with less weight. You have to find the scale that you can do accurately and train your body through that. Um, and that's the way Bant Hammer training really exists. But like, I'm losing arguments with people all the time. Sure. They're like, what hammer should I get? This one. Ah, well, I think we should get this one. Yeah, yeah what the hell do I know? Yeah. I've just been <laughs> developing the program for seven years and like testing it and hitting myself in the face and doing <laughs> everything wrong. And they're like, no, 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 I, I'll totally figure it out. I'm like, okay, I'll take, and it's, ter it's terrible business because I'm essentially going, no, spend, spend less money, buy this one. And, that, and people are like, no, I'm going to buy this one and then buy the other one later. I'm like, you're doing it wrong. But <laughs> I suppose I'd make more money. Yeah. Well, you, you do your due diligence. That's all you can do. I'm trying, you know, yeah. the, um, because for me as a coach, like I want, I want people to get the most they possibly can out of it. And so when, when guys are purchasing 20s instead of 40s and when women are purchasing 10s instead of 20s i'm going you're you're going to be able to cheat the movement with bad technique All right. and and that's not good like especially when it comes to pressing i don't know how much of that you got into with it but when you're pressing this thing people like it's always falling out of people's grip and i'm right. like yeah it's because your grip's garbage it's and it's a it's not it's not like an indictment of training. It's just going certain pieces of equipment are better suited to taxing big primary movers and certain pieces of equipment are better at taxing secondary stabilization systems. And the fact like, you know, mace work. So it's like right up that alley of going, when your grip is done, you're done. You yeah. get to stop today. You might have more in your shoulder tank, but your grip is gone. And as a piece of functional training, you know, working with firefighters, I don't want a firefighter who's got plenty of shoulder and not enough hand. Like he's going to be going in into a situation that's incredibly dangerous. And it doesn't matter that he's repping out, you know, 300 pounds on an overhead press. He can't hold on to a sledgehammer anymore. So he's going to get stuck in a burning building. Um, so for the group of people that are looking to train that way, it's a great piece of equipment. It's not necessarily for everybody, but that's, you know, you got to find the thing to get you off the couch. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, you know, the mace has gotten a lot of people off the couch and into fitness. Um, and and then they get into other things. Like, I, I never swung kettlebells. <clears throat> excuse me. I never swung the kettlebells before. But once I got into mace, I started using kettlebells. And then once I started using kettlebells, I, I was able to use your Banff hammer with w yeah. a little bit more uh, understanding of of what to do without any instructions or anything. But now yeah. since you're offering a three month workout plan, that's that's really great because if you're a gym owner and you want to buy some of these things, that workout plan comes with it. They could immediately start training with it and understand how to and and translate it over to their clients. So Absolutely. another tool in the toolbox on that level, which is, which is awesome. Yeah. We're um, uh, in January. I'm actually, uh, I'm going to be filming a 15 part video series that is geared specifically towards CrossFit gym owners and going, okay, so you have this piece of equipment. You're not getting a wad coming down from CrossFit HQ. That's got a bam hammer in it yet. Um, but you've got all these people who with varying degrees of fitness levels coming into your gym, where is the practical application? And you mentioned before with that, you know, swing up to the shoulder, the intentionality necessary absolutely does its job in slowing people down and getting them thinking, where is my body in space? Yeah. And throughout the coaching, throughout that three month program, I'm constantly telling people you need a you don't just need a hammer. You need a notebook and you need to give yourself 15 minutes after you stretch to just like write down what worked, what didn't. You might not be able to answer the question, how do I fix what went wrong? But being able to go, something about this isn't right. Like the power's coming from the wrong place or this hurts, like this aches when I do this and I don't know why. Getting the average person who doesn't sit around and just think about training all day 
to internalize that and actually go, I can be a better athlete if I'm doing X yeah. and just increases their, their awareness of what's going on in their system. And that's the difference between like a weekend warrior and somebody who is truly trying to be an athlete is they just, they're putting mental energy into accuracy and movement. Yeah. Um, Cause like, I, I spent a couple of years coaching at a, it wasn't a CrossFit gym. It was a competitor's, like a, a competitor's company. But the number of times you get people coming in going, you, they've been there for six months and you're like, okay, today we're doing cleans. And they're like, what's a clean? And I'm going, why are you here? Like, you don't get to pay this amount of money and then be a middle school gym rat. <laughs> like this, is, I don't, you're not paying me enough to be able to come into my place of business and go, I just don't care. And I'm like, well, get out. Like you can have your money back. You don't care. Like, right. you know, if this is really what you want, embrace an unhealthy lifestyle because it's considerably easier and there are a lot less headaches than you know coming to my job and demanding that your arm be twisted yeah uh, i'm just not not interested <laughs> but, um but that's a bad again that's a bad business model of going uh you're a crappy client so here's your last month's money money back and get out yeah well go, it, it go, might be bad but it, this this is what it is. We're talking about people putting effort and energy into moving weight around, and yeah. nothing is nothing is soft or frilly about it. It's not, yeah. you know. Um, so people sometimes need to be told, like, "Hey, this is just step up to the plate, or that's it. You just go sit yeah. and sit on the sidelines." But you know, the people who have success are the people who step up to the plate. Seriously. So and, that's it. Pep talk well, over. We're, we're going to be inundated with this in social media for the next you know month and a half of like change doesn't happen unless you change or some variation of those motivational quotes that everybody wishes did more to help them you know get the thing done yeah. but like it's a, what why do you think you're going to be able to come in here and present zero mental energy yeah you know like you want to talk about elite level athletes in any field. You think that guy shows up for 90 minutes of the gym and then goes home and doesn't think about what worked and what didn't just for a little bit. Then you've got elite level guys who are, it's all like those men, those women, all of their mental energy is pursuant of being a better athlete. So if you re like now's the time of year to be like, if you really want to see that type of change, it's probably going to be more beneficial to, focus on becoming an athlete when you maybe weren't in the past, as opposed to just looking yourself in the mirror and going to the gym until you like the way you look naked. Right. Like, no. So, so, um, so do you, you feel that pretty much anybody should kind of frame their uh, fitness level in terms of thinking like a, some type of athlete? A absolutely. No matter what you do or what your yeah. job is or whatever. Sure. Um, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where I, I encourage that because I think it is a more resilient goal structure and working with athletes, like being able to go, what will get you out of bed when you were up too late the night before and work sucks. And, you know, when life comes at you and, is it, is it CrossFit? Is CrossFit the thing that we're like, I will get up at 5.30 because I want to do this. Then that's great. Like, go do that. Yeah. Is it gymnastics? Go do that. Is it steel club? Is it mace work? Go do that. Is it band hammer? Go do that. But like, I look at it and go, we have enough of an obesity problem in this country that everybody working in fitness can kind of get out of each other's face about who's got the best program and instead be like, there's plenty of body fat to go around. Like we don't need to worry about it um, rather than arm wrestling over who's got the best program. Yeah. It's like, as long as people aren't getting hurt, yeah, I don't care. Like go be like, go do it. Like awesome. Go, go to town. I'll tell you right now. I, I go to um, uh, a group class every once in a while. It's called body pump. You ever hear a body pump? Yeah. 
Yeah, it's like it's they're they're big. It's like a it's like a brand name, but they ha- they make little plastic weights that like mm-hmm. I mean, if you saw these things, they literally look like toys that you would give your yeah. three year old to pretend that they're working out. But th- it's real weight. It's the real <laughs> stuff, but it's just in plastic, and the barbells are sh- those short little barbells with these funky little like Y clamps. On, I'm trying to yeah. be in the camera here. They're they're like this, and they pinch down on the on the weights. And you laugh at them, but you know what? 20 pounds, 30 pounds, whatever you're putting on it, it's still 30 pounds. And there's a stepper, and there's an instructor, and the instructor is talking the whole time, and there's, it's all choreographed to music, and you're doing half reps, full reps, all that. And, I mean, I'm wiped out after these classes, and I love going to them because they're awesome full-body workouts. And who cares what it is? You know, it keeps me it keeps me going. Sometimes I just need a change. So, ah, we lost him. No, hang on. Uh, all right. Does that Something show? Is... Oh, there you go. There we go. All right. Start the phone call. But yeah, that's that's um that's my point though. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you just fine. Right. This is going to be really interesting. So, I think there's somebody in my house. Okay, let's go find out. Let's go find out. We're gonna <laughs> this, go this way. Because... If somebody actually kills you. Yeah. We got it on video, and this is really going to drive the the ratings of the podcast yeah, through the roof. Ratings are going to go through the roof if yeah. I get killed. Here. I, I will We're definitely in- say something nice about you at your eulogy. Yeah, you're invited. Oh, hello. Doing all right. There's somebody at the front door. Who is it? Um, is the the arrow exterminator guy? I'm doing a live podcast right now. You're on a podcast. Welcome. Nice. Um, you're here to do the inspection, right? Yes. Sir. Do you need to get inside? Uh, just the basement area. And garage. Okay, sounds good. Let me put the pit bull away, and we'll. we'll Sir, get for out of twenty-five dollars, we will plug oh. your exterminating uh, company right just, now. So just give me a minute. Stop. Come here. Come on. Don't worry. You think twenty-five dollars is enough for? A hundred. No. <laughs> go. 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 Nice Christmas decorations there. Oh yeah, thank you. Look, you're not gonna eat the exterminator. Okay, just get over it. Good, good. No, no. Go into his room. So everybody at home listening or watching, you could see that Sean Richardson of Banff Hammer is just a regular guy like the rest of us. You know, he yeah. just makes these hammers in his garage and has to deal with the the ongoings of everyday stuff, getting the exterminator yeah. to come in and all that stuff. Yeah, so, you know, get after whatever you need to get after, brother. Yes, sir. Um, so, yeah, everything's fine. Didn't get killed. All right. That's hey. that's all right, I guess. I was not that I was uh, hoping for, but it's was... been an amazing ratings bump. <laughs> yeah. In local news, live murder witnessed on podcast. <laughs> Steel Mace Nation goes way above Joe Rogan podcast in one fell swoop. Get one episode <laughs> where Joe's like, "Oh man," uh, I actually I tried to. He's one of many people that have like. He's like the the I. Early on in the Bam Hammer's history, um, I flew with one out to On It Labs. Yeah. Just like I stayed with a friend for a week. I had a hammer. Uh, it was one of the earlier designs before I had everything like I was welding everything together. And I uh, just bought a week's worth of training at the facility in Austin and waited, like loitered until Aubrey Marcus showed up yeah. and interrupted his workout. Um, and it was like, kind of waited for him to be resting and then i went over and was like mr marcus uh really a big fan of everything that your company does i flew i i flew here from atlanta with to show you my big hammer um <laughs> he, he kind of stops and he looks at me and goes that's the most homoerotic thing anybody's ever said to me <laughs> it's like yeah that's it, about right <laughs> um and it ended up being a good time uh they they i mean i went out there with it essentially going if there's any company that I'm going to trust with this thing right now, it's on it. Like yeah. the way they patient, the, their attitude about kettlebells and everything, they were the right fit. Um, and I was like, if you guys want the IP, I'll sell it to you. If not, I'm going to have to do this by myself. Um, because I like, for me, the control of the education is the most important thing. Um, and, uh, and they ended up passing. It was right when they were doing the, uh, the Iron Club, Iron Man kettlebell and the Captain America bumper plates. Oh, yeah. I was like, you need this right now. Um, and they ended up, I mean, their, their partnership with Marvel was apparently very restrictive in terms of what they were able to produce. Um, so oh, so if you're listening, you still have it. You just got to call me. And it costs more now. 
<laughs> well, the price does go up as more people get involved, right? Yeah, we owe a percentage to Steel Mace Nation, so I need to increase the price. <laughs> you hear that, Aubrey? Yeah. But did he try it out? Uh, yeah, he did a little bit with it. I spent more time with John Wolf, who is yeah. their chief fitness officer. And, you know, John and I went through a fair bit um, and uh, just talked about possibilities of the evolution of the product and things like that. He and I worked together for, you know, met up for a couple hours over the course of like three days. Oh, wow. Um, and, uh, and then I had to get out of Dodge. So they were just like, nah. That's um, – that's great, though. I mean, you probably got to get so much good information. He probably th threw a few good ideas at you that you could possibly use. Yeah, and I'll, I'll send John an email, you know, every six months or so, just going, hey, brother, here's what's going on. Um, here's the update. And he's always really kind about getting back. Um, so it, it was a great connection. I met a couple of really cool people out there. So um, it was absolutely worth it. Uh, still a big fan of everything that Onnit's got going on. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, I would I would stay with that because I mean they got the um the hydrocore bag and and of course yeah. they have maces and um they're all into the unconventional so I mean yeah. th there might be a place for the the hammer down the down the line. I mean it's just the Maybe. Um as a matter of fact, uh the the group that got like you were on that got to try the hammer, the guy who invented the hydrocore, Mauricio, is on the list. Like he's next. Oh, no kidding. So all right. It's kind of like chilling out waiting do i have to sign something for you yes sir live signing termite stuff <laughs> he's great hey resolution means repercussions mm -hmm. for your current lifestyle resolution means repercussions for your current lifestyle that is a knowledge bomb from the arrow exterminator guy wow Check nice what's his uh in what's his um instagram handle do you have an instagram uh coach sean i believe it's coach sean at coach sean oh what are you a uh, no, coach cheerleading for 23 years. All right. Coach, okay. coach cheerleading. He, yeah, yes. cheerleading coach. Okay. Really? For uh, for what? For high school, college? Uh, high school, both. High school and college. Oh, wow. All right. Yeah, everybody check out Coach Sean on Instagram. He, uh, S E A N. S E A N. Oh, never mind. No uh, plug. Okay. Uh, it spells his name wrong. Coach Sean S E A N on Instagram? Yes. Yeah. Give him a follow. I'm gonna. I'll follow him as soon as we're done. Yeah, I, I want to see this uh, about cheerleading. The I make. Oh, absolutely. Because I've got connections in 398 cheer gyms in the southeast. All right. So. Hey, Sean. Uh, awesome. Listen, I got. I'm running a podcast. It's called Steel Mace Nation. Um, you know, what's up, man? How you doing? <laughs> you're gonna. You're. I hope you don't mind, but we're gonna put you on social media. Great. Right. Uh, why don't you uh, hook up with me, DM me at Steel Mace Nation, and then we'll talk, and maybe we could set up something. We'll we'll yeah, talk about happened. your cheerleading. Yeah, absolutely. All right, man. Thank you, sir. Good meeting you. Good meeting you. <laughs> yeah, have a good one, man. <laughs> Got another episode coming down the pike yeah, here. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> now, isn't that amazing? You know, you got, uh, the, you know, the exterminator comes in, and he's coaching – cheerleading which is movement which is fitness we got your brother because we lost your video yeah, I'm still again here, but my phone started doing something weird it's like it oh i picked up my phone and it was like are you driving and it shut everything down. oh okay all right um so who you got coming next uh who, who you got anybody, the ups guy pizza I, guy uh, my my wife already called which is weird because she knows i'm doing the podcast right now i totally <laughs> forgot about the arrow exterminator guy that was coming in today um so we'll see it'll be it'll be an adventure one way or the other <laughs> yeah cheer coach sean cheer coach sean at cheer coach sean s-e-a-n okay on at cheer coach sean s-e-a-n yeah. check him out have a good one um, what do you say yes 384 He's in a bunch of different cheer gyms in the southeast. Wow. Like yeah. That's incredible. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I wonder how the Banff Hammer would help in, you know, with cheerleading, something like that. Like, could possibly be something in there. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I, I look at, you know, the Hammer, I mean, is obviously my product. But uh, when it comes to that, like, Mace, Indian Club, Bamp hammer, whatever, any type of shoulder, like 
full range of motion shoulder stability work. It doesn't matter what you're coming at me with. I'm like, no, you should be doing it too. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, if anything, it bulletproofs shoulders for like for an incredibly healthy joint. And one of the things that I, I talk to people all the time is like, the CrossFit games are going to be coming up here soon. And yeah. so it's like a gamble of what's this year's injury going to be. And, you know, right. last year they did, they had all those ring dips that were not blown out pecs, like rip tearing pecs. And I'm going, you have any idea how badly things have to go in order for the pec to be the thing that pops. Yeah. Um, and so for, for a CrossFit attitude where you're like, the goal is primarily barbell movement and moving heavy loads. I'm like, you don't have to add it in the wad, but throw it in your warm up, throw it in your cool down so that the next day, like you're not creating a more brittle joint. When it comes to cheerleading, when there's lots and lots of gymnastics movement, throw it in the warm up, throw it in the cool down, and just make sure that you're creating the greatest amount of mobility through that joint yep. that is also functionally strong. Yeah, it's never a bad idea to be as strong as you are mobile. Right. Um, yeah. The so, the um, the thing about uh, athletes is they get so specified into what they're doing, and mm -hmm. there's very little room for other types of training a lot of the times. But because they want to excel at that one thing that they do, but they become uh, susceptible to injury if they do something else. You know, like yeah. a, like picture a cyclist, which is just sitting on a bike. And they're hunched over and they're in, you know, they're in the cockpit of their of their bike and they're trying to stay aerodynamic and their legs are strong. But, you know, other things start to suffer because of that. I mean, yeah. that's that, that's what you're basically talking about. You throw it in yeah. and you warm up, you cool down or on an off day where sure. it's like, OK, we're not oh. going to really train this, but grab the hammer, you know, and move, yeah. move it around a little bit. And you're, you're all of a sudden you're just moving in various ways that you never did before. Absolutely. And as a, you know, as a, an off day tool, it's great. Like if, if your goal is pressing super heavy loads, you need to be spending time recovering, but it's really easy for people to feel like they're not making progress if they're not getting sweaty every day. When it comes to the hammer or a mace or a club, you're going, okay, we're operating at what, 5% of between five and 15% of maximum strength output. So we're being nicer to your central nervous system. Your central nervous system gets to recover. The musculature is getting a chance to recover, but you're still moving. You're still training um, and training body awareness, training movement in space. Um, that's the type of thing that separates someone who's truly going to grow as an athlete and versus someone who's like, is going to eventually become frustrated and, I mean, at least that's that's my attitude. And in the in the coaching that I've done, my experience has been the person who can see and enjoy the path up the mountain is much more likely to reach the precipice. Yes. If the person who hates every step of the path will never get to the top right. because they just never turn around and go, oh, man, this is like I have a long way to go, but I I'm enjoying the process of getting there yeah yeah it's always about the journey right that's what keeps you going yeah because you, you know even though you might have that end goal in mind it doesn't necessarily always come true because it, it's there but you wind up some somewhere else sometimes and then you have sure. you have to say okay well this is not bad either this is pretty good I, I made some advancement in my in my athleticism uh and i sure did enjoy it along the way i had a lot of fun and made a lot of friends along the way, met a lot of cool people, and, and yeah. now here I am. And now I reset, and where's my next journey going to take me? Yeah. And, I mean, there's a is an old – I think it's a Chinese proverb. I can't remember. But it's the man who chases two rabbits catches neither. And I say that to people all the time. And, it, you know, the, the idea being you have to pick a thing and pursue it. Um, and it's perfectly fine – I think in the realm of fitness right now, it's it's really easy for each individual methodology to be like, pursue us, pursue us, you know, CrossFit, pursue us, gymnastics, mm -hmm. pursue us, mace, pursue us. Um, so for somebody stepping into the fitness world who has never, never had a fitness goal before, 
it's not in it it doesn't present the best possible outcome to go no you need to be a blank you need to be a crossfitter or you need to be a bodybuilder just go no be healthier and in the pursuit of being healthier it's totally fine to start with crossfit and be like yo i am not a fan of x about this but you know what i really do like you know it's like I might not, somebody might not like wadding out, but they really do like barbell movement. So maybe they pivot into um, doing Olympic lifting or they pivot into being a more conventional power lifter. We still like fitness still wins yeah. because they're off the couch. Yeah. And it's that thing of going, okay, I'm going to climb this mountain and go, it's okay to get halfway up and go, you know what? I'd really rather climb that mountain. You're still climbing the mountain. Yeah. So we're still healthier as a populace yeah. and we're still less obese and we're still able to move around more. Um, but everybody in the fitness industry kind of has to pull their head out of the butt and stop going, ours is the best thing. And if you're not doing that, screw you. Yeah. Whatever. Yep. It's we're all true, man. Still eating at gym class. So I think we can all take a bit of a perspective step back. <laughs> like just gym class, everybody. Yeah. Just yeah. Call. Right. Yeah, 45 minutes until the bell rings. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. You know. Well, you know, uh, Sean, I, I'm also happy uh, that right down the street where one of the gyms I work out at, they actually bought your your hammers. It's a uh, platform, oh, awesome. platform training in, in, um, in yes. Wanamasa, Wanamasa, New Jersey. Yeah, awesome. Dude, yeah. that's so cool. Yeah, I, I went in there the other day uh, to talk to him about doing a uh, mace workshop, and I see your – like you know various different sizes i was like oh i didn't i didn't get a chance to swing the little ones i gotta try those yeah. ones but uh yeah i mean they're they're so th it's cool i could i could train on them and it's good to see that they're popping up everywhere did you ever reach out to uh mace fit um frank DeMeo over at uh macefit.com he's in florida sarasota florida he, um he does a lot of stuff with the adex mace and um I, that's how okay so that's how he he and I've been connected by uh, by Donnie. Yeah. Um, right. Donnie and I just met in the last couple of months down at uh, an expo down in Miami. Yeah. Uh, and we traded products. Like I sent him a hammer and he sent me a uh, an eight X. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Isn't um, great? But uh, so I think he and I have been connected, but we haven't had a chance to to chop it up and like really, you know, make make a. a better connection yet so yeah i mean if, if you want i could met i could try to introduce you guys or something but you know like awesome. his gym would be i could definitely see i haven't been to his gym yet i plan to go uh but you know you can see the videos they're using adx and it's just like a, a rock solid gym you know and i could just see your hammers in there because those guys down there love that shit it's just part yeah. of their genetic makeup and everything so that would be cool awesome. to see I yeah, we'll see if we can make that happen. Uh, before we go, any um, any new things coming out, like new products or anything? Um, let's see, new product. Okay, two seconds. So I made this. He's got energy, man. I've got hammers everywhere. So um, I made a ten pound flail. Holy shit! Oh, no, you can see this. <laughs> it's awesome. It's a steel ball yeah full shot on a chain on a handle that is freaking now, sick and as it i mean you want everybody gives me crap like what if i hit myself in the head with a hammer and i'm like well it's made of rubber you'll be fine and then i made this thing and it's like what if i get hit in the head and it's like that's an effective way to kill an enemy in battle for several hundred years yeah taking this into the gym um I, I put together this one just as kind of a test, but work, I mean, you know this, working with, with clubs and maces with the general public who have never encountered them before, there's this very, you, there's this unique position of momentum plus control plus chaos that is going on in a good swing. Good uh, analogy. For, and teaching teaching uh like 360s with a mace and everything there's that moment of you get somebody moving it around and they're just fighting for too much control and it's nothing but bad position right. um 
And I wanted to see if I could make a tool that would immediately show somebody the feedback of proper momentum. And the flail does that brilliantly because you have to keep the chain tight. Otherwise you get hit in the head. I probably have a bad attitude when it comes to like coaching. Cause I go, okay, we're going to do something incredibly dangerous. You're either going to do it right. Or you're not going to do anything again ever because you're going to die. Um, but it, sign me it up worked. coach. It's like, here. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's my, my most recent like Frankenstein monster project. All right. Um, I also, uh, I've, I have a friend who's a strong man, uh, up in Nashville and I started giving him crap because he worked a regular sledgehammer and tire into his workout. And I was like, dude, you're like overhead pressing 400 pounds. Why are you using a 10 pound sledgehammer you bought at home Depot? Yeah. He's like, well, there's nothing else. So I made him a prototype. Uh, and I might start selling him who knows, but it's a, uh, it's probably 35 pounds of rubber. It's not the typical shape that I use. Uh, it's a one-off, but on a five foot handle. Ah, so it's a giant mace that he can, you can like step into it and slam it. Yes. Right. And I've been recovering from an elbow surgery for the last couple of months. So I haven't sent it to him cause I want to play with it before I send it out the door. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I might order one or two more of those blocks from my rubber guy, just so I can make a couple and, and get this one sent to him. Um, so it's always like when you have a welder in the garage and the, like too much free time, it's yeah. always like, well, what can I put together? Yeah. Um, you're, so yeah, your imagination is is either going to uh, limit you or it's going to propel you into a whole other realm of chaos and insanity. But that's absolutely that's what's so awesome about it, you know. And I I think like yeah, you're you're probably sounds like your creative juices are flowing and you have a good product. Uh, I believe in it. I've used it. Um, everybody that I've seen use it, they they love it. So I think yeah, what you just showed us now, these these new ideas and everything, maybe some of them won't ever see the day light of day but other ones like the five foot handle yeah. one who knows but it's good to see and and um again you know you're you're making these things for the idea of getting people into fitness or or even elevating them to another level i mean it's mm -hmm. all for common good so yeah great for you like the I trained for Ninja Warrior as a sport. It's been a minute um, just because I've been dealing with the injury, but that's a sport where I, I've got all of my friends from the Ninja Warrior community here in Atlanta that will go with me on the road. I'm like, you need to be doing rotational work on your shoulders. Mm -hmm. um, you want to talk about a group of athletes that are just beat to snot. It's Ninja Warrior people because they're, we have a combination of like reckless stupidity and it's a sport that doesn't have this long history of strength and conditioning. Everybody just kind of is throwing crap at the wall and seeing what sticks. Um, so trying to get friends of mine to, to be more responsible with their, their shoulder health is something that I, I do a lot with this, but um, you know, so there, there are practical applications all over the place. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but you learn something either way. And I've always said, if, if one per if somebody's willing to get off the couch for the hammer that wasn't willing to get off the couch for the barbell, that's a win. Yep. Uh, it, you know, it might be an incredibly small niche. It might be, might be bigger. Who knows? Uh, but for right now, I love seeing how much, you know, I seeing more podcasts like yours pop up more Mace studios showing up that are um, getting people moving in a different way. It's just like, more, more fitness, more health, more responsibility in yeah. terms of that stuff. Yeah. So that's the big, the big takeaway. Nice, Sean. Nice. So tell everybody uh, how to get in touch with you, how to order a hammer. Give um, us the so lowdown. all the orders happen online at bamfhammer.com, B-A-M-F hammer.com. Um, I'm most active on Instagram. So if, like I do the best that I can to respond to uh, everybody who sends me a DM. Um, so at Bamphammer on Instagram. The other thing is the uh, the Christmas, New Year's holiday deal that's going to happen is exclusively uh, we're 
I'm going to get people to listen to your podcast. That's the goal. So nice. if you want the uh, the 15% discount for Christmas, New Year's, and we're going to keep it going until the end of January, the code is Steel Mace Nation on the website. So you're going to have to listen to this podcast to figure that out. Okay. Uh, but, uh, and of course, I'll be, you know, reposting everything. But yeah, 15% off everything on the website. That's fantastic, Sean. I, I appreciate that. And I'm sure everybody listening appreciates that too and 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 hopefully some people will pick up some hammers and introduce that into their repertoire or whatever you want to call it and and uh and have a good time with it so that's great uh what a great christmas present to find under your christmas tree right what the hell would you get me a big brick over here and you open it up and it's a hammer you start smashing things guys it's perfect for your lady who wants to get into fitness if you give her a gym membership this is a trap you are in trouble if you give her uh, a giant hammer, you are essentially saying, wife, girlfriend, you are so badass. This is what you are capable of rather than, you know, here's an L.A. fitness membership. Yeah, why? You, do you think I need to, to exercise? Is that what you're trying to tell me? I'm, I'm, no, I'm saying you're worthy. <laughs> you're a worthy significant other. Nice. Try that bitch. <laughs> Very good, man. Very good. I love it. I love it. Th- that's the good Christmas attitude to have, too. So yeah. th- there you go, everybody. Sean Richardson, Bamf Hammer. Hello. Thanks so much for listening, everybody.